Scleroderma is a systemic condition that affects all the body, mainly the skin. Keep in mind, the patient will have mainly skin symptoms, but there will also be visceral or intra-abdominal symptoms as well. It is described as both an autoimmune, non-inflammatory, and sclerotic condition. There will be widespread activation of the CD4 lymphocytes, and this will stimulate the fibroblast growth. And of course, this results in collagen deposition. So you will have fibrosis all over the body. The main skin condition include puffiness of the face, with taut skin and no wrinkles. There will also be fibrosis of the fingertips. The systemic involvement can involve pretty much any organ in the body, mainly the esophagus or the lower esophageal sphincter. This is one of the earliest, if not the first symptom, other than the skin, of course. There will be incompetence of the lower esophageal sphincter with atrophy and fibrous replacement. So of course you expect the patient to have symptoms of GERD. But it can also involve other parts of the esophagus, like for example the middle, the middle or upper part, and this presents as dysmotility with the patient having dysphagia. If the pulmonary system is involved, we expect the patient to have hypertension in the pulmonary area, so pulmonary hypertension, with interstitial fibrosis. The kidneys can also be involved, and this is known as scleroderma renal crisis. And it goes without saying that the cardiovascular system will also be involved and the patient might present with hypertension. Most of the patients tend to be females with a ratio of 3 to 1. It is subdivided into two other classifications depending on the skin involvement, either diffuse scleroderma where the patients will have the symptoms in pretty much all their skin, or limited scleroderma, where the symptoms mainly involve the face and the hands. In the diffuse part, there will be, like we said, widespread involvement of the skin, but there will also be visceral or intra-abdominal involvement as well. And these visceral symptoms tend to start very early. The progression would be very, very rapid, and it's associated with the antibodies, anti-scleroderma 70 antibody, which is a DNA topoisomerase 1 antibody, and anti-RNA polymerase 3 antibody. On the other hand, the limited scleroderma, which has the involvement mainly in the face and the fingers or hands, also involves intra-abdominal structures, but the symptoms are much milder than the diffuse type. The presentation will be more benign, and the prognosis is much better. It's also known as Crest Syndrome. So for calcinosis, anti-centriomeres antibodies, Raynaud's phenomena, esophageal dysmotility, sclerodactyle antelangiectasis. The treatment depends on the patient's presentation. If the patient mainly presents with pain, we give them non-steroids and other pain medications, if they present with dysphagia, for example, we give them certain diets that do not cause dysphagia, and generally speaking, to slow down or decrease the skin involvement, we use immunosuppressant medications. Use the link below to get access to the full dermatology course. This includes more than 60 lectures with study notes and revision cards. You will also get access to the flashcards and MCQs. Thank you for watching.